Ako ako si Mike Mark, ang host nyo for tonight, Pinoy Crossover, the weekly show where Filipinos talk in ball. I hope you guys are excited for tonight. Let's get started. Who do we have as a guest? Well, honorary host for tonight. Tell us who it is. I'm James. You guys already know me, so. <laughs> <laughs> and our special guest for tonight. How you doing tonight, Avish? Tell us everyone. Tell everyone here on tonight. How you doing? I'm doing pretty well, guys. Excited to be here. Let's talk ball. Uh, it's my favorite subject, so. I'm actually the director of marketing for True Sports TV and uh, one of the co-founders of uh, U of T Sports Business, uh, which is an association at, at the University of Toronto. So I've uh, been working in sports for the last five, six years and uh, kind of moved a little bit laterally in other roles as well. But uh, sports has always been my passion. So I'm excited to be here. That's awesome. We're excited to have you too. Tell us a little bit, I guess, about how did you get started into the world of sports or in my state basketball? I don't know which is the first sport that you got into. Tell us a little bit about yourself then. Yeah, it's yeah. so funny. I, so I actually started at uh, U of T and, and that's how I got to know a few people uh, that have been on this show. Like you'll realize after a little while, mm -hmm. sports is such a small community. It is. And you start to get to know people as you grow, you're growing with them. Mm -hmm. So we started a, an organization at the University of Toronto while I was an accounting student. Mm -hmm. And it was because uh, my friend and I actually went down to the city of Boston to go the MIT Sports Analytics Conference. Mm -hmm. And it's this massive conference down there, all about analytics, 3,000 people. Actually, Barack Obama wow. spoke last year. Okay. Um, so we got a chance to go down, and we were super inspired. Mm -hmm. So what happened was that we came back and we're like, how do we start our own conference? Yeah. Like, we, we got to have something in the city of Toronto. Yeah. This is the third largest sports market per capita in North America. Yeah. Why don't we have a conference here? Yeah. So my buddy and I went to Robarts Library, which is at U of T, and we started drawing on a napkin. And we started drawing what the posters would look like, what the, what the conference theme would look like. And then we just built a team around it. Mm -hmm. And we started cold calling people to, to kind of attend the event. Mm -hmm. And uh, we found out right when, like uh, probably a couple months before the event, yeah. that we didn't have enough money to actually put on the event. Yeah. So that's kind of a, that's kind of a bummer, yeah. especially as students. Yeah. Um, so I picked up the, uh, oh, actually I emailed uh, the CEO of the Toronto Blue Jays, Paul Beeston. Yeah. And I got his EA to actually respond to me. Oh, wow. And I was super surprised. Yeah. So as an 18-year-old student, yeah. I emailed the, the EA and I said, uh, you know, is there any chance that you'd be willing to sponsor the conference, sponsor the conference, and uh, maybe potentially speak? Yeah. So I went into the CEO's office. He made some time for me. Wow. Took off my jacket. Super humble guy. Yeah. And uh, he said, you know, and I had a little bit of facial hair at the time. He's like, yeah. you, you kind of look like Jose Batista. <laughs> and we're paying a lot of money for him. Can, can, <laughs> yeah. can, can we put you in, uh, in right field over there? Yeah. And we joked around, and, and uh, actually, he ended up being the first sponsor of our conference. Wow. So it kind of gave me an opportunity to open my eyes to the Blue Jays organization mm -hmm. and then start to realize a love for sponsorship mm -hmm. marketing, mm -hmm. which is what I build my career around. Mm -hmm. So at U of T, it was kind of cool. We ran our first event, and it's been going on for the last seven years since I graduated. Wow. Um, and uh, now it's one of the bigger sports conferences in Canada. Wow, that's amazing. Awesome. Tell us, I guess... Um, with the conference, what was your what was your goal with you and your buddy? To what did you guys wanted it to be about? What did you guys structured it to be? And where has it grown now to be in seven years from where you said you mentioned it? Yeah, totally. So uh, Natan and I, uh, we we kind of thought the conference wasn't going to be a big deal. It was going to be a bunch of students at the university, mm -hmm. some small club that was that was going to have a couple speakers come out. Mm -hmm. Nobody would remember it. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, we actually ended up selling out that event. It was about 130 people. Mm -hmm. And then continuously each year, it started to grow and grow. Mm -hmm. We started getting the Toronto Star to, to, writers to come, National Post writers. So there was wow. a little bit of media coverage that allowed us to continue to expand the event yeah. outside of just Toronto. Yeah. So once we realized that a lot of people were coming you know, from Michigan, from other cities that allowed us to say, we're becoming an, like an internationally known event for a student organization. The students really took it the next level after, after I left. Oh, what gives you the drive? Because like you had a little setback and you were like, shoot, what should I do next? Yeah. And then you end up like calling or emailing the CEO. So what gives you the drive to like just keep going? I think sometimes you're going to get obstacles thrown your way. And we yeah. all do it, right? We all, yeah. we all see it. Yeah. Um, but sometimes when you're against a wall, you look for a door, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you look for a way to kind of find another path around, because there's always going to be another path. Okay. And you might get a, a little road bump, but how do you get over it? Yeah. From what you've started with UTSB and what you guys have grown into, where has that led you to where you are now? What are the things that you, um, that, that opportunity grows and what, what does that take, what did that take you? Yeah, it's, it's funny. So um, 
the first, one of the first calls that I actually made was to the director of finance at the SCORE TV station. Mm -hmm. So they got bought out by Rogers. We, we're all familiar with them growing up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I called the director of finance and I said, hey, do you want to come speak at our conference? And he's like, uh, you don't want me there. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I'm like, oh, why not? He's like, I'm not a good speaker, but you're, you study accounting, right? And I was like, yeah. He's like, well, we're looking for a junior accountant right now. And uh, do you want to come in for an interview? Yeah. So I went in for an interview and I ended up getting the job. Stayed there for about nine months and then went into uh, a hedge fund accounting role after that. So mm -hmm. that's when I quickly realized that I wanted to be in sports the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, it, was, it was a passion that drove me mm -hmm. and it was the excitement of the industry and, and just, you know, being a sports fan growing up, yeah. there's, there's nothing more mm -hmm. exciting than being surrounded being, by it yeah, exactly. as you continue to get older exactly. as well. I do. Yeah. Um, so for me, I went to the hedge fund company. I said, no, I'm not doing this. So yeah. I, I gave myself a year, went to a sports marketing program at George Brown. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, I uh, actually ran into an internship opportunity with the Blue Jays. Mm -hmm. And because mm -hmm. I already had built connections with the Blue Jays organization with the conference, mm -hmm. it gave me a little bit of an in mm -hmm. to get an internship. So worked there for about 10 months and then took that opportunity, went over to the Pan Am Games, and from there I continued building my career. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, what are you up to now in terms of uh, what you're doing now? What are the things that you currently, what projects are you currently involved in? Cool, yeah, so um, we're going to talk ball in a bit, so I, yeah. I, I get excited about that. <laughs> yeah. but, um, so a buddy of mine that I played basketball with growing up around the, around the town of Markham, yeah. uh, Raymond Kingu, so he came uh, and, and saw me at LA Fitness one time, yeah. and he basically said, you know, like, I'm starting up this uh, digital media first platform yeah. that's all about the community, and we yeah. want to make sure we're highlighting things in the community, but also, you know, what you're seeing in the sports world all across North America. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I actually thought there was a cool value proposition that he was building with the, with the, the company itself. Mm -hmm. And it all started by, by, like, by the consumer yeah. by, that's watching, right? Yeah. So if you like football, we have content tailored yeah. to you. If you like hockey, we have podcasts tailored to you. We have uh, a podcast called Three the North that three guys uh, over at the College of Sports Media are working on. And, mm -hmm. and they kill it every week that they work on it. Yeah. So I think there's, there's a bunch of different ideas behind it, mm -hmm. and it's bringing it all together, so no matter what sport you like, okay. you are, you're, that platform's okay. for you. That's amazing, yeah. How no. does it feel like, like working behind the scenes? Because sometimes we see movies like Moneyball, like Brad Pitt talking about baseball behind the scenes. How does it feel like just you know, working in the community and doing it behind the scenes. So yeah. yeah. So if you talk to pro sports level, yeah. it's not as sexy as everyone thinks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, you know, when you first start, you, you get you get excited about the industry, all the people around, mm -hmm. getting to see all your friends at, at the Raptors games or the, or the Leafs games. But I think at the end of it, it, it is still a job, yeah. right? I think what excites me is the community aspect. Mm -hmm. So whenever I'm working in the community and kind of seeing, you know, uh, Raymond actually does a, a great basketball tournament in the town of Markham, mm -hmm. and this was the first year he's done it. So when I went out to go see it, you know, all the kids playing, mm -hmm. and Andre de Garas does the same thing in the town of Markham. So it's like mm -hmm. when you see all these community individuals giving back to where they grew up, mm -hmm. that excites me about the industry. And, and all I want to see is kind of more kids, mm -hmm. more girls, more guys starting to get involved in sports at mm -hmm. a young age whether that be from the business side or from okay. as an athletics perspective. 